After serving his apprenticeship at Aston Villa, John became the country's youngest head groundsman by joining Coventry City, but it wasn't without its challenges. So just on my 20, literally on my 24th birthday, I started at the Rico Arena. Um, at the time, one of the youngest head groundsmen in the country, certainly in the Football League, probably the youngest. Um, and again, I knew the people at, at, at Coventry. So for me, it was an easy transition, but then realising the book stops with you was a, a big step up. But at a young age, I, was, I felt I was ready for it. Um, I felt although I was taking a step down from the Premier League back into the Championship, I did feel this was my chance to make my mark um, and take all the lessons I'd learned from 13 years old into the position and looked at everyone else's mistakes, looked at everyone else, how else, everyone else had done things well and really make my mark on their, a football club and a department. And yeah, and then, so I started at the Rico and again, another steep learning curve, you know, within the first six weeks we were hit with rugby, which wasn't something that we had been told about. Um, and the pitch was, I'd inherited a pitch that wasn't in particularly great conditions, probably fair to say, um, full of power, you know, the reinforcement system that was in at the time wasn't particularly working well. Um, and that first year the pitch fell to bits and it, as silly as it sounds, there was threats to not death threats as such but there was certainly threats to get me out and all the fans calling for, to get me out because all of a sudden the pitch had gone from what looked good in the summer because it was full of power to something that had fell off the face of the earth in the winter as anticipated um, so that was my, my first sort of experience of how difficult it can be at the top and how difficult it can be to um, feel that pressure and the pressure that you're under um, but year on year, you know, I, I managed to improve things at Coventry, really culminating in the um, 2012 Olympics. Uh, we had managed to secure quite a good resource budget, quite a good machinery budget, um, and we had employed a few more members of staff. And the Olympics was really the pinnacle of my career at the stadium. We had dealt with concerts, which was great. You know, that's the whole sort of an interesting learning curve, something that I dealt with in my previous tenure when I was coming through the club in the first instance. Um, but to be in control of that process from start to finish um, and understand the wider business model. And it really was where I cut my teeth in understanding business in football because the commercial aspect of the pitch and what sits inside an arena um, was really apparent at Coventry. We were very multi-use, we were very multifunctional, and the owners of the arena at the time were really keen to push that as far as they could. Unfortunately, with my input, we, we managed to manage that well, um, so that the pitch was never jeopardised to the point where we couldn't get it back. Um, but again, we were never obstructive. We were always quite proactive in our approach, sort of outlining the consequence if they had an event, whether it be rugby, whether it be football, whether it be monster trucks, whatever they wanted to do on, on the pitch, we always outlined the consequence. And if the finances added up, then we would do it. And that worked really well for me at the Rico and I really, really learned a lot of valuable lessons in the commercial aspect of football and I had direct access to the board there, um, which again taught me to speak on that level and, and really sort of understand that you have to develop a business plan when you propose to people as opposed to going in and just saying, I want this, I want this and this is the reason and because I'm the head groundsman or the grounds manager, then we should do it, you know, and, and for, at the time, you know that seemed to be the way that the industry was perceived I guess is that they just sort of sort of lick their finger and thought yeah I need that and then we go in I'm not saying it was for everybody but certainly at that time when I was in that position when you looked around a lot of people were just going in and asking for things without a, a real proposal or a business plan to back up exactly what they wanted um, so amazing learning curve real sort of insight into the whole operation of football not just you know, groundsmanship, it was more about everything, business aspects, finances, the commercial aspect of a football club and the um, commercial value of a football pitch. And uh, again, carried that with me here and hopefully improved it as I moved to Leicester.